Welcome to the Empower Now podcast. It's your host, Reggie White. I'm bringing one of my uh, awesome brothers in Christ, Ken Graham, on the line here. Um, We are in season two, episode six, and we're starting off a brand new series uh, called High Passion to Purpose. I'm really excited about what me and Ken are going to talk about today, because I think all of us can relate that when we, um, you know, get up each day, God, God willing, we think about what's the call today or what was I born to do or different things come to your mind as you um, progress through this life. And I'm hoping this discussion that me and Ken have today can be insightful and helpful for somebody looking to achieve purpose in some shape or form in their life. Um, I'm going to start us off with a prayer and then Ken and I will dive right in. Um, And again, this is something that I'm hoping can uh, be motivational and inspirational and supportive and helpful for the listeners. If you're driving, please focus on getting your destination safe. We want you to get home safe to that destination safe. Uh, we'd rather you pray in agreement with us rather than closing your eyes. So please focus on getting to your destination while you're listening to the podcast. With that, uh, for those that's able, please go to the throne with us by bowing. Um, and we're going to uh, pray in agreement here as we prepare to, uh, the episode. Lord, thank you for bringing me and my brother Ken on the uh, airways together for this podcast. Father, I pray that you can be able to be in the atmosphere in the mist help set the environment in the right way. And if there's anything that's not like you, Father, I pray that you can remove it from the atmosphere. Help us to understand the power of uh, our tongue. Help us to understand the power of what it means to go after purpose and feel fulfilling your will and how we have to be in alignment with your will to achieve said purpose. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing. And I just know that this is gonna be something that can help uplift somebody and help um, redirect somebody in the right direction as they're going through their life. And I pray that me and Ken can be able to uh, just say things in alignment, not only with your word, but with the uh, will that you have for this episode and episodes to come. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, Ken, um, I know you've introduced yourself to the listeners before, so I don't want to uh, rehash that. Kim was actually the first ever guest I had on Power Now. We did like an ad hoc recording where I was just kind of testing out the podcasters apps. Uh, it was called Anchor probably back then at that time, but I was just doing a test with them and we ended up having a whole impromptu episode. So I encourage you, if you haven't listened to episode zero, listen to episode zero to learn more about Kim and even what we were trying to do with Empower Now that's been going on for some time now. So really excited for this second season and also for Ken to join me on this topic. But Ken, where I will say what I would like you to uh, talk with the uh, listeners about that I think could be important, talk to them about the journey you've gone through. So there's been a lot that's happened from your time at Clemson to as you've made the transition from you know being a trainer to now the job you're in now, bro. Walk us through those last probably like two, three years, if you don't mind. I think that'd be a good place to start. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, so as Reggie said, I was on for the first um, and the, the episode zero and episode one where we had um, a man on with me. Uh, I, so I, I guess I'll start really um, as far as like uh, my senior year at Clemson and then we can kind of uh, fast forward to here. So 2021 all the way up to right now where we're sitting at 2023. So I was a student at Clemson. I got my uh, Bachelor's of Science in Business Marketing with a minor in Entrepreneurship. Um, also took a few classes just for, with text, like tech-based classes, like learn how to code, stuff like that. Learn how to kind of just uh, have very, very shallow, low, like A-level conversations around tech and stuff. Never really thought that would uh, kind of pop up again in my career. So when I graduated from Clemson, I actually got a job. Um, with a personal training studio working as a personal trainer. Uh, But then eventually I was able to kind of climb up the ranks and kind of climb up the ladder in the small business to become like a supervisor uh, for the personal training business. So this was a situation where I went from training the clients myself, where the clients would see me as their main form of contact. And I was essentially the business myself to a position where I was actually put put, uh, there to train the trainers who we had but also make sure talent was coming in and out of that business as far as trainers are concerned uh, pretty regularly. So we had an internship program that I was over where every um, every semester, so spring, the summer semester, as well as the fall semester, it was my obligation and my number one priority at the beginning of those semesters to make sure that I have a nice funnel of around four to six interns coming in just to make sure we keeping that talent high. Um, So from that, uh, around July of 2023, so where we currently sit, 
Um, I was actually blessed enough to get a new job opportunity, the one that I currently hold now, uh, which is where I'm doing IT sales and uh, managing solutions around the software space with a company called uh, Computer Center, uh, which is a company based out in Great Britain. So with this current company, remember, if you guys are listening, um, I told you that I had like a little bit of tech, not tech experience, but tech knowledge because of just some electives that I took at Clemson. So this was actually where that kind of came back up. Uh, So this is a job that I currently hold now where my title is sales associate uh, because my job is to do technical selling, uh, whether that's actually selling hardware, like the devices you guys may be listening on this right now, or selling software, which are the things that power the devices that you guys may be listening uh, on right now. And I guess uh, it it was a a very unfamiliar space and it still is to this day. But because of just my management experience and just my life experience, but also some of the valuable business knowledge, business acumen and different things that I learned at Clemson, um, I was able to really kind of uh, thrust in this position confidently now and just be in a position where I'm learning as much as I can throughout this entire process. Uh, I just want to say, because I talk a lot about like what's going on in the world, throughout this entire process from 2021, senior year at Clemson, to 2023 now, God was also doing a very, very, very major work in my life. Um, and that's something that we can kind of talk a little bit more about today, too. Ken, thank you so much for the transparency that you just gave, bro, about that journey. And I, I intentionally asked that question because the, the next thing I'm just going to kind of ask you to the listeners is, did you have any idea that that was going to happen if we'd have gone back to your senior here at Clemson, that you'd be doing what you're doing now? Uh, of course not. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so for those that's on the line or listening or that's like going through a journey, it doesn't matter if you're in school or if you're in working, the working environment right now and trying to figure out how to make a change. Things can happen in a matter of a year and like two years and a couple of months. You just like, you just never know how things can change. And Ken is a testament to that. So Ken, um, I'm going to try my best to set the stage here. I wanted to start there first because I think sometimes it's important to give home perspective and testimony so folks can be able to gravitate to you know what's real. Um, I want to set the stage here. So again, we're starting a brand new series. The series now here that we're talking through the rest of the way on season two is Top Passion and Purpose. Um, back in season one, I talked through, you know, power and the first thing in power was purpose. And we talked that in great detail, what purpose is, what it means to go after purpose. And I've even had moments, I think in tidbits where I talked about time, passion, and purpose. We're going to really drill that down today. And um, what I want for the listeners to, to kind of keep in the back of their mind is the things that you're passionate about, you tend to be more motivated to do. Um, but the thing that we got to be really careful about and making sure that we do is how do we have the right balance and alignment with passion and purpose? So when you tie your passion with purpose, um, that's a great thing. But be careful that you don't make things idols. Be careful that you don't go after the wrong things with the wrong motivations, with the wrong intention. We got to be making sure we're doing things with the right intention and the right motive behind that. So I'm going to read some scripture and then me and Ken are going to have a dialogue and kind of will even talk to his point about how God was working on him and how he's making a great transformation in his life through 21 to 23. We're going to just have a, a, trans, um, a transparent dialogue that I think could be helpful as we go through it. So I'm going to read Proverbs 16 verses 1 through 9. I'm coming out of the uh, New International Version, and that's going to be a great place to set the stage for what we're going to talk about related to time, passion, and purpose. It says, To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person weighs seems pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper and even the wicked for a day of disaster. But the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Though through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And that's where we're, we're going to be going today. Again, at the end there, right there, um, verse 9, where it says, In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes your steps. When you want to tie passion and purpose the right way, it's having that fervent fire to be able to go out here and be about our Father's business and our Father is Jesus Christ is what I'm talking about but also making sure that he is establishing our steps for that said purpose. So what are we trying to achieve and go after? And is Christ in it? And is, is the right motive in it? And is the right intent in it? And are we doing it out of love? Are we doing it out of the right thing? So 
Ken, the first question I have for you after kind of reading, you know, verses one through nine in Proverbs 16, and then you can react as well if you want. Um, what does walking in your purpose look like? Man. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, this is this this is this is one of those questions that um if if under if, if this question right here is understood correctly or answer to this question understood correctly, man, it could change your life. I think asking and, and this is what I've come up with, right, Reggie? Mm-hmm. Um, I think asking what does it look like to walk in your purpose is similar to asking like, you know, what does it look like to be a good man? Well, it could look like you taking care of your mom. It could look like you taking care of your wife if you have one. It could look like you taking care of your father. It could look like you taking care of your family. It could look like you taking care of your business. It could look like you just showing up to work on time every day. So, so at, what does what does walking your purpose look like? It can look like a multiplicity of things. I think really the the answer that we're looking for is what does walking in your purpose feel like? Because when you walk in your purpose it's less of the things that you do that other people see and more of how I orient myself every day based off of that internal thing that's waking me up to do whatever I have to do that people see because it all starts on the inside. And I think that the answer to that question is what does walking in your purpose feel like? It feels like every day when you wake up, you're excited or you're just motivated to do whatever you have to do because the things that you're doing, you're no longer doing with you as the primary beneficiary you're doing things that either uh impact positively a collective group of people or maybe it just impacts positively positively um some form of like uh system that helps other people so really uh reggie just kind of uh kind of dial it back down man it's really about man what does it feel like and it just feels like waking up every day ready to impact others because you know that you're sent to help others and not just help uh, yourself. Yeah, man. I think the end of that, what you just said, Ken, is so spot on, bro. When we think about purpose and achieving said purpose or achieving said goal or making an impact on something or moving the needle on something, it's never tied to just one said thing. A lot of the times, a purpose for one thing is the first checkbox that you have to complete or the first thing you got to do that leads to the next thing. Let me give an example. So if you're on a a road trip trying to get to your destination, you don't got no gas. The first thing you're going to go do is get gas so you can get to your destination. So that's like, I have to get the gas to drive my car to the destination. This is another example. So like, say somebody's looking to to train for a, a track meet or training for, you know, getting ready for a season for any sport to start. If you have a baseline of being out of shape, the first step is I got to get back into the game shape before I can go be ready for the actual event itself. So like, it's just so powerful what you're saying there, bro, because it it, it does. It's not about just achieving said thing for just me. Who am I assigned to? Who is the person that needs me to fulfill this goal so that I can help get them to their destination? Who am I looking to bring along the way? So again, putting it for those that are working, if you're like in a hiring um, perspective or if you're in an industry that you're looking to find talent, there's going to be generational talent. There's going to come a time where somebody else needs to retire. How do you get ready and train up another generation to be able to go out here and achieve said purpose for the company or whatever it is you're trying to do? And if you're not being intentional about understanding the gaps that you have to go hire the right talent, you know, that's another piece. So it's just so convoluted and so many things that comes into purpose. But kind of coming back to the question, what does walking in your purpose look like? Walking in your purpose looks like not accomplishment that you kind of have empty. No, it looks like as I'm progressing through this journey, I am hitting milestones and seeing things shift along the way. So let's use a weight loss perspective. Say you say, you know what? I have a goal. I want to lose 25, 30 pounds in a, a span of six months. Progression as you're walking to fulfill that purpose is, hey, I'm losing a pound a week or, hey, each month I'm losing five pounds. Like whatever that looks like, it's continuous progress to get you to that next milestone to achieve. And again, the, the thing you got to be real careful about, about achieving purposes or going after goals is, again, we get so caught up in a checkbox mentality. How do we say, you know, it's not about me getting to the end goal destination in a faster time frame. It's about me getting to the end goal. So sometimes, man, walking in your purpose just looks like saying, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I don't know how this is working out. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm seizing the moment and going after and doing things as if I'm doing to the Lord in everything that I do and doing it in an excellent perspective, doing it that way. It's not about me being noticed or seen that I'm going to do a good job because I believe in doing a good job and the 
you know, the Lord I serve requires me to do things in excellence. So that's the mindset we have to have. And it's just so, so important. I'm gonna give a really quick example for folks that are uh, really familiar. Um, right now, as me and Ken are recording this, uh, this is like September time frame, and sports is getting ready to start back up. And I'm a big, big uh, sports guy. And one of the things I'm really big on is like uh, debate shows. So like first take an undisputed to the world. And I'm really excited for this partnership that's gonna be happening between Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. But I'm bringing up Shannon Sharp right now in particular for a reason. Um, because I think it's really powerful what we're talking about when we talk about uh, tying passion to purpose. You know, a lot of times when people talk about Stephen A. Smith or Shannon Sharp or somebody that has a, like a more electric personality, like even a Kevin Hart, you know, folks focus on the energy, but don't focus on the why the energy is behind that. And um, Shannon Sharp believed in dominating everything he did when it came in terms of his career in the NFL as a tight end, all the way to when he became and started working on the other side of it as a uh, you know, as an analyst and then a, a, a broadcaster and finding ways to get into podcasting. And I bring that up to say that that passion, that work ethic, that mindset carries over to everything you do. And that's what Shannon Sharp did. And I'm just really, uh, really pleased to see all the things he's been doing with his his podcast. And now he's going on first take. And it's just an example of what happens when you believe in dominating everything that you do. So, Ken, the next thing I want us to talk about for a little bit, man, is how do we find that right balance about passion with purpose? Yeah, man, and I also say I'm a big, I'm a super big fan of Shannon too, Max. He has been, he's just such a um admirable man in my opinion, on and off TV, and you just don't often see that a lot. So shout out, shout out to Shannon Sharp too, man, for sure, for sure. And you know, if I'm gonna do that, shout out to Stephen A. Smith as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll have to kind of go back and quote myself just to, just to remain consistent in the narrative that I'm telling people. Go back and quote myself from like the episode we shot. Uh, with Greg so as I understand it how passion and purpose correlate from a practical standpoint is that passion nine out of ten passion is the thing that you find before purpose so a lot of times we understand our passion before we truly grasp our purpose and your passion to for the most part for you is a skill or a talent that you have been given that you can use in the world, it's, it's inspired from God, but you can use this passion in the world to essentially grow yourself and be fruitful and do whatever you have to do. Do some of the first commandments that God told man to ever do. Fruitful, multiply all these things, produce of your own kind. Passion can give you this thing. Now purpose is just a little bit different. It's not super different, but purpose is just a little bit different because purpose is that thing um, that that your passions will kind of drive into and your passions can potentially not only fuel your purpose, but your passions can also tell you of what your purpose will be if you don't yet know it. So for example, because that was a man that was a lot of high language, so I, I hope that y'all still with me. But just to give a practical example, say that Shannon Sharp, um, he's passionate about football and he's passionate about uh, dominating and passionate about just showing up on time and being the best where, where, everywhere he is. Shannon's passion may be football and all that, but Shannon's purpose could be something just like being an example or creating a space where men, black men can look up to him and just, you know, uh, see that, hey, this is possible, X, Y, Z. So two things that feed into each other. Um, it's just one thing a lot of times that passion comes before purpose. So boom, that's the framework. So if the, when the question becomes of like, how do we kind of like balance those things? Really, man, it's, it's, I hate to be this type of dude, but really, man, it's like a case by case basis because too much passion will prevent you from, um, it'll, I think it'll prevent you from being able to ever really understand how not important you are. Because if you're so tied into your passion, you will truly believe that everything that has to come must come through you because this is the thing that you're talented with and that's just not the truth for a lot of people um and if you're too tied into your purpose then maybe i don't honestly now that i'm thinking about it it may not be such a thing to be too tied into your purpose but a lot of times if you get too high-minded or too heavily minded you may be no earthly good when it comes to purpose because purpose is like a big 360 like what does it look like 10-year goal uh do i see the entire corporation type situation um, so, so my answer, right, is how do you uh, find that balance between passion and purpose? It comes in 
having some form of like governing system, like governing body or checks and balances in your life to where you know, hey, at this point in time, I'm I'm called to be this person. When I told you, so, okay, let's just be real. So when I told you guys back in uh, the episode and in, in season one, it was episode one, that my purpose was to build spaces for other people to find their purpose. Y'all, so the thing about that is I don't walk in that constantly. I can't go into every space thinking that, oh, this is a place where I got to build up a space for other people to find their purpose. No, maybe that's already built. Maybe that's already established. So I think one of the biggest things you have to do when balancing is understanding like, okay, how do I read a room? Is what God so given me to do, is it really needed right here? Or is somebody else on assignment in this like district? X, Y, Z, and just having that governing system um, and, and just kind of being able to keep in check with yourself on a consistent basis. Man, bro, power, powerful, bro, powerful. Um, I'm gonna try my best to add to what Kim was saying. Then I actually got some uh, very timely scripture that I'm gonna read to what uh, Kim was just talking about. But here's what I would say to that question about what's the right balance of passion with purpose. It's about understanding what the said purpose is that you're looking to achieve and understanding what feel or what motivation or what goals you need to have in place to go achieve that. So. I'm a big routine guy. I'm a big time management guy. Um, there's definitely things where I feel like I'm not hitting the mark on that, but here's what I mean by that. If you know that you have to be at a flight, and say, let's say you live in Atlanta, let's say you're trying to get, Atlanta's one of the busiest airports in America. It is, it's terrible. And you, you, if you're looking to go somewhere, especially if you have a flight that's like, you know, midday or end of the night, uh, you can't be the type of person that says, you know what, I'm gonna get there an hour behind, before my flight and expect that I won't have any challenges to get there on time. So. What I'm getting at is, is if you want to have that right down on the passion and purpose, what's that ingredient or what's that uh, that mix look like? What's that formula look like of what you're looking to do? The first thing to understand. The next thing is you need to understand the ebbs and the flows of what that looks like. So again, for many of us, we know what our strengths, our weaknesses, and what things that we struggle with are. And what I'm saying about when it comes in terms of balancing passion with purpose is if you're the type of person that is going to run into the fumes burnout, that's a problem. Yes, you may achieve the goal, but you didn't achieve the goal wholeheartedly and do it in the right way. Something I talk with Ken about all the time is how do we make sure we take self inventory and know we need to rest? So finding the right balance with purpose is, am I doing it in the most efficient way possible? Or am I just trying to do it with a certain, certain theory, certain tenacity that I'm going to get the job done no matter what? And that's a dangerous mindset. So when we talk about balancing passion with purpose, Am I coming at this from the wrong angle? Am I saying I'm going to move everything out of my way to get this done? Or am I saying I'm going to do things in decency and order? Like, we got to find ways to be very systematic. Something that um, was told to me uh, back in 2022 that really challenged me, and I've been trying to find ways to apply it more, was saying that when you have goals in place without a systematic approach, they never last. And I was like, wow. Like, when I really think about like weight loss or when I think about, um, you know, finances or when I think about different things, if you do not have a system in place to repeat success, it's going to be a, a checkbox. You're like, hey, I did it, but I'm not sustaining it. So if you're looking to go get that house or if you're looking to go and make that change, you got to have a system in place. If you don't have structure, if you don't have, uh, uh, you know, a routine or something that's going to help you to achieve that goal, you're not going to get it. So that's where this equation of passion and purpose comes into play. How do I make sure I have the right motivation? How do I make sure that I'm rested? How do I make sure that I understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it? And if I don't have those things in order, who can help me along the way to help guide me to do it in the right way and balancing the passion with sick purpose? Man. Ugh. Oh my God. <laughs> hey man, I'm, I'm, I'll just start by saying that that prayer that you opened up with, it worked. You know, you, you said something that really like, I'm not gonna lie, it, 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 it like triggered me because you mentioned the word system and about about three months ago, so this, this is like back when I had my old job, about three months ago, I was given like a word uh, from God. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I was given a word from God on system and and I'm gonna I'm share it with you, and I'm gonna share it with your uh, with your listeners really quickly. I promise you, it's like a it's like a five minute ordeal, if that. So, oh, so, so when you mention systems, systems are so very important, and kind of like you said, systems are similar to software in the sense of it's not a thing that you see, 
almost ever but it is something that has guidelines that everything that you see and everything that you do is ran through this system it's ran through this software the reason why Mac has its own OS and Apple has its uh, um, well not Apple but Google has its own S and HP has their own OS is because these are different software different operating systems and I was I, and basically God had told me he was like everything that you are going through right now is in direct correlation to the system that has been allowing it to like happen that's good and bad right good and good and bad systems but specifically systems that are in your life that aren't necessarily benefiting you at this moment. This is what he told me. He said that in order to create a system, well, no, 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 let me say it right. In order to fight a system that you didn't know even existed, you have to create a system. So this is the instance that was happening. At my old job, we had a situation where, my old job was where I was doing personal training. At my old job, we had a situation where, for some reason, we had so many people who we had to, like, do uh, consults for and people who we wanted to get money from just trying to run them through the business and show them X, Y, Z, doing the fitness assessment to park you, X, Y, Z, all this. But we didn't have a system in place to properly cue these individuals, so put them in a line fashion. So we would often be super, super overwhelmed as a staff because we'd have a situation where like three people came in at the same time when we only had the capacity to serve two and even that was pushing it and we would have meetings like week after week after week after week and we're like what's going on here and we came to the conclusion Reggie that there was a system that was not written down at all that was at work wasn't benefiting us so how so we because we were so frustrated week in went out week out because we will make these plans and say hey okay we're not gonna let this happen and the next week would happen and it would happen again the only thing that allowed us to come up out of that rut and finally fix our our issue of queuing and scheduling clients is we had to create a system right so here, here's what i'm saying there are systems in, this is what he told me there are systems in your life that aren't benefiting you and the worst part about these systems is that you didn't even know it was a system because you never wrote it down. This is just the way you're living your life. And the only way for you to beat this system is I need you to create a new system. Here's the thing, though. When you create this new system, I need you to make rules in this new system that go up against very harshly the things in the old system that was hurting you. So here's what I'm saying, t- uh, tying it back to what we what we did at my old job. The problem that we the problem that we incurred is that we didn't have a a scheduling uh, online communication system that would let us know when a client booked for a session to come in for the first time, communicate that back to us so that it would go into our scheduler. So everybody would understand that there was somebody coming in, but nobody knew the exact time. So we had to buy, create, and make a new system to where the two systems that allowed the client to schedule and us to see when the client was scheduled communicated. That fixed it. And God told me, okay, so if you're going through a situation right now where you have problems with a specific boundary, this system that I need you to create that's going to fix your life, it has to come up against that boundary like explicitly. It has to happen. And I guess the way this uh, ties Reggie back to what we're talking about, passion and purpose, kind of like you said, if you're looking to uh, pursue passion with a good heart and find your purpose with an earnest heart, you must understand that there are current systems that you're obeying that serve you, but just as much there are current systems that you're obeying that are hurting you. And you have to be able to recognize those systems that are hurting you and remove them by creating another system that serves you. It sounds easy, but it's not. Um, but but yeah, man, the whole thing, bro. Man, man, wow! Somebody needed to hear that, bro. And I definitely feel like I'm one of them somebodies. That is relevant, man. Oh my gosh! So thank you for sharing that, Kim. Yeah. I really appreciate it, man. So I'm gonna read uh, a, uh, a classes three verses one through eleven, um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about kind of like appointed time, but also watchouts. Um, And then kind of go from there. So the subtext says here in the New International Version, a time for everything. I'm coming from verses, sorry, chapter three, verses one through nine, sorry, one through 11. And it says, 
There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. There is so much to unpack there. Uh, we're not going to be able to unpack everything in this episode. But here's what I want to make sure I'm being really relevant. Uh, time was mentioned so many times in this uh, passage of scripture. And I want to go back to the topic that me and Ken are talking about right now. When we talk about passion, tying passion to purpose. There is a time under this life for everything when we think about as we walk in earth and under the heavens, but we have to understand what is the appointed time that we're in right now. We're not going to have every context. We're not going to have it all figured out, but there is times when we need to let things go. There's times when we need to step up. There's times when we need to speak life in certain situations. There's times when we need to speak death to something that needs to die like a bad habit. There is a time for us to make sure we are in alignment with what we need to do. So if you're going to be passionate about something, make sure you're focusing on something that's in this right time. And don't be frustrated when something's not in the time of today. You could be going through a preparation season that's getting you ready for that big moment when the time truly comes. You don't get to decide what that appointed time is. That's another thing that I wanna uh, just uh, say out here because we have to make sure we know what season we're in. We need to make sure we have the right people around us. And we need to make sure that we're ready. So when that time comes to see, achieve set purpose or what God's calling us to do that's in his alignment and his will, we gotta make sure we're ready. Because if we're not ready, we might miss that appointed time because we didn't take the time beforehand to prepare them and get ready. So Ken, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. I want you to react to what I'm saying here first before I ask the next question, because I think it's really important what we're gonna talk about next after we kind of di dissect this a little bit. Yeah, man, I, I think really you you pretty much, you know, wrap the present and put the bow on top because that, that timing is everything. Um, timing, however, is very, it, to, to us, because we're supposed to understand something that governs us, which in and of itself is problematic, because I can't understand what hasn't happened yet. So I, I think one of the hardest things about understanding like God's timing and uh, knowing, okay, when is the time right for me to do X, Y, or Z thing? One of the biggest things that has helped me out when it comes to this is really just keeping your ear to the sky. I know that I know that may sound like so like cliche and like oh this is just Christian jargon he's trying to throw at us, but there's no other way to know what God is doing in your life unless you're listening to Him. That's what I mean by saying uh, putting your ear to the sky. There's no other way to understand God's timing unless you have some form of relationship with Him. Um, outside of that, I, I can't really I can't really say how to know when the timing is right, man. You just got to be. Uh, keeping those ears really, really peeled to what God is doing and saying in your life. Man, amen, bro. Amen. So everything we've been talking about these like past 30 plus minutes um, is leading up to a few more things. One of those things that I want to talk about next is some watch outs about, you know, fulfilling purpose and going after something. So Ken, like the things we've been talking about, and this is kind of crazy. This almost feels like a part two to what we talked about in episode one at Purpose. But um, what are some watch outs for people to be looking out for on the, um, you know, being careful about when they're trying to pursue um, purpose? One of the biggest things that I, and, and really what's happening right now, Reggie, is I'm telling me to watch out for this because this is something that uh, I'm, I'm teetering the line of right now. When you're on, is because first of all, to know what your purpose is, you are a very blessed individual. If you know what your purpose is, most people should. But if you don't, that's okay. If so, you're blessed because you know what your purpose is. And when you know your purpose, I want you to be very careful of the time that you allow yourself to like be ingratiated in planning for your purpose i can't tell you reggie how many like um birthdays that i've missed for my cousins 
or just calls that I've missed to my aunt or like uh, just, you know, hey, I love you, man, that I miss you to my uncles because I was too laser focused tunnel vision on planning for my purpose. I'm planning for something that ain't even happened yet. So I would say one of the biggest watch outs is don't do too much of a good thing to where you let that good thing pull you away from other really great things. And one of the biggest struggles that I've had is like being able to, you know, balance that time between my family um, and, and not just my mama and my daddy and my sister. I'm talking about my entire family because they all matter in spite uh, of me still having to do some planning for your purpose. So I would say, man, just make sure that you're giving the people who love you the most the time that they need on your journey to like your purpose for real, for real. Man, bro, that is spot on, bro. Spot on. It was so well said. What I want to add to what Kim was saying, and I think a lot of us can uh, relate to this, but I'm going to try my best to say this the right way. And I promise I'm not trying to come across any way as you think is relevant. When we're trying to uh, fulfill our purpose, uh, a lot of us, like when we think about like just trying to make ends meet and surviving and living, we get really focused on, again, a lot of folks call it the bag. You could be calling it money. You call it a whole bunch of different things. But be real careful that that thing that you, especially if you came from an environment where you didn't have anything and you're, you're trying to come up, you're trying to make a way for your family, you're trying to be better than if you didn't have a, a father figure or a mother figure or somebody in your life and you're trying to make ends meet and trying to really provide a life that you didn't have. Be careful that you don't obsess so much that money becomes the end all be all. Um, no man can serve two masters and money is something that really can be uh, a big watch out. And the reason why I say it is because we could be starting off with the right intentions and then finances come in a good way for us to feel us and motivate us or, you know, to help us to do things. But money is a resource. Money is not the end all be all. I'll never forget. I was listening to Ken, to you and uh, AJ's uh, podcast on the third day. And you guys were talking about how, you know, you can't take anything that's in this life with you. And that's what I want to kind of chime in on this episode here of saying this, like when we think about money and stuff and all these different things, like, I was re- literally reading um, in, a, in a, another episode and even when I was um, kind of studying in Matthew and was talking about how seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then all other things will be added to you. You can't say I want to get all the stuff first and not first have a relationship with Christ and not first be seeking him. Um, money is a resource and money is not the end all be all. And if you're not careful, man, yeah, I know there's a lot of people out here that's living a lifestyle where they don't have to think about spending things or everything's coming easy for those individuals. But one, you don't know what it took for them to get there. Two, you don't know if there's an obsession going on. And you got to be really careful that we don't get so caught up in this Instagram, social media, filter mindset that we think money is the end all be all. And it's not because you can have money and everything what Ken just said really kind of like resonated with me is you can have all the stuff in the world and nobody to share it with. And then you will get older, if God willing, if things go well, if you've been able to be around. And there's going to come a time if you're alone and there's nobody to share it with, and you got all this stuff, was it worth it? And that's where we talk about what is it for a man to gain the world but lose his soul. Like, you do not want to be in an environment of as you're um, achieving purpose, becoming successful, but you get so in love with money that you forget that it's about the one, Jesus Christ. And it's about, you know, the relationships that come along the way. So that's what I would just say. We have to really be watching out for money because money and motivation for money. Um, yes, we have to use money to pay our bills. And yes, we have to use money to, to, to make ends meet, to eat, do different things. But money is a resource and money should be used to help and bless others, not just for us to focus on ourselves and be in love with it. It's a very, very big watch out that I wanted to highlight. Man, that is that is that is so good and i just want to take them back if i can really quick i know we running low on time but i want to take y'all back to school real quick if i can because this is something that i didn't understand not until i got money but until i was actually able to feel what it feels like to have like that dollar amount that i wanted so like what does it feel like to have like ten thousand dollars in my bank account like i always imagine like what did that feel like I think when I get that, like, I'm going to feel like, oh, man, like, everything feels good. Everything is great. Like, boom, boom, boom. I'm walking on sunshine. That's, that's just not the case. So if y'all remember, a lot of people in school were taught about this thing called uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And Maslow's hierarchy of needs is essentially some form of, like, um, uh, psychology, psychological uh, pyramid that Maslow created to understand the levels of human needs. So this is specific to the human. And I'm gonna read it off real quick. So at the top of the pyramid is self-actualization. 
That's the desire to become and the most that the most that you can be. The, the second down is esteem. So respect, self-esteem, status, recognition, strength, freedom. The third down is love and belonging, friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. The uh, fourth down is safety needs. So personal security, employment, resources, health, property. And the very bottom of the pyramid is physiological needs, which is air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. Here's what I'm saying, guys. So to a person who's looking at money as if money is the like money is the end all be all. When I get money, money's going to give me everything. This is what me and Reggie are saying on this pyramid, self-actualization, esteem, love and belonging, safety needs, physiological needs. You know what? Money can get you, believe it or not, four out of five of these things. But the one part of the pyramid that it can't get you is the most important part. Money can get you self-actualization because you can you can become an esteemed individual. Money can get you esteem because money can actually buy you respect, status, and recognition. I promise you, I've seen it. Money can get you safety. You can get a bigger house. You can get an alarm system. You can get a better job. It can do that. Money can also provide you some of your physiological natural needs air water food shelter you can't buy air i actually made a mistake on that one but you can buy shelter food and water you can buy clothing xyz but the one thing that money will never ever be able to give you is love and belonging it's at the very middle of this pyramid and it's 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 categorized by friendship intimacy family and a sense of connection i don't care if you got 300 billion dollars if you think that money is going to fix that hole or whatever in your heart that's looking for loving and belonging, when you get that money, because you very well may get it, you're going to find out that it actually doesn't make it better. It makes it worse because there are certain things that money just can't buy. And on your pursuit to passion, purpose, whatever it may be, Reggie called it the bag. Some people call it whatever. Understand that with all this money that you're going out to get and that you may get, if you don't uh, leverage those relationships that you have now, you're going to be at the top crying yourself to sleep every single night. And I can promise you that. I don't like to do that, but I can. Man, man, I, I got to let that uh, resonate for a little bit, Ken, because you were uh, preaching right there, bro. That's that's real. And I, I think it's really uh, interesting how love was at the center of that. Because mm-hmm. transparently, when we think about human beings, like human nature, right? Like, let's take everything else out the equation because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but I want to just like drive that home really quick. Everybody has a desire to feel wanted, to be understood, to be heard, to belong, just like Ken said. And, you know, when we think about that in itself, that's just why it's so important not to let that motivation be ill intent when we think about money. So I just think the relationship with money, we got to change our relationship and mindset to what we think about money. Um, I got one more thing that I'm going to say, and then I'm going to turn over to Ken to give some final thoughts. But I really want to challenge the listeners. I want you to really challenge yourself and take time. And again, I'm the type of person where I I prefer to talk things through and to listen to voice memos or talk it through rather than write it down. But whatever that looks like for you, if you're the type of person that needs to write things down, if you're the type of person who needs to put a spreadsheet together, whatever that is, I encourage you to really dissect what am I passionate about and why. And I also want you to think about what are the signs in my life or the things that's happened in my life that have been kind of like aha moments of, man, this might be what my purpose is. Now, for those that, uh, you know, have been listening to season two, I already uh, talked about for, for Christians and believers what our united purpose is. Our united purpose is to preach the gospel to bring others to Christ. But when we think about just like the specific call on your life of how you go out and bring others to Christ and how you go out in here and be a positive impact in the world and not just a good person, right? Like it's not about being a good person. When we think about purpose, Like, really think about what are the things in life that have been aha moments of, man, that came naturally to me. Man, I was able to really kind of show up in that moment. Like, those are going to be the signs of this equation of what you need to be kind of aligning. And that's where prayer comes into play, too. Uh, God, reveal to me what you would have me to do so I can be able to be about your business. And that's what I would also say uh, when we think about trying to really dissect passion and purpose. And, um, you know, Ken and I would be happy if anybody is listening and want to talk things through. We can tell you from our life. I do not have it all together. I still feel like I'm trying to figure out and take the right steps to this day. But I think right now what's happening that I'm really grateful for is my circle is changing. And I can tell you from a, like my own perspective and own experience that there is nothing like when you start seeing yourself being surrounded around 
one, like-minded people, two, the right people, and three, starting to really kind of take time for yourself to go and go after something for yourself. And man, it's just, it's not, it's like no other. And I think I've been real grateful for that. So I encourage you listeners to dissect passion and purpose and what that looks like in your life. Yeah. Yeah, you had to let that resonate. I think both me and Ken had to let that breathe for a second. <laughs> Ooh, that, is, that is good. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, Ken, I want you to give your final thought to the listeners, man. I'm going to give mine. And then we're going to wrap episode six here, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to say this. <laughs> every I tend to say this everywhere I go now. It's so funny, man. I was, uh, I was attending... Uh, a seminar that we had at my job for um, solution specialists. So these are people who do like inside sales and like solutions for our, our IT, uh, like uh, the IT portion of our company. So what is that like practically? These are people who actually really, really do the tech, not the technology, like sourcing and coding and X, Y, Z. So these people are, when you get your laptop in your like AT&T store, they are the people who uploaded that uh, operating system and did that data migration onto that laptop so that it looks like, you know, kind of what you expect. Right. And so these are really, really techie, like high-minded, um, just amazing personalities all in one room. Uh, leadership was there too. And we were having a conversation. They were talking about Amazon Go Store. Now, I don't know if y'all know what Amazon Go Store is, but it is, oh, it is so phenomenal, Reggie. Amazon is so strong on this like tech space that they have not only bought Whole Foods, but they in certain metropolitan areas, we don't have one in Atlanta yet, but it's coming. They have something called an Amazon Go store. And this is a store, a grocery store, where you can literally go in the store and when you pick up items, it already puts them into your cart. So it just automatically like puts on a bill for you should you have like an Amazon account. There's no contact with no type of cash register or anything. You take the items, put them in your basket, or even put them in your bag. And when you walk out, you get billed. Like, there's no form of human contact whatsoever. And I was in this room just listening, like, soaking up information. And they were having a conversation saying, like, hey, you know, we're trying to figure out, okay, what if somebody buys a, picks up a Gatorade from aisle three, and they don't want it, and they set it back on aisle five? How can we make some form of uh, technology to make sure that they don't get charged, but also that the Gatorade, if it was be picked up by somebody else, that the system would charge that new person, even though it wasn't in the right place? These are the types of conversations that are being had about the life that you're going to live eventually. And and I really think I really think we're going through a paradigm shift. And I truly believe this with all my heart. That's why I say it so much. I really think that we're going through a paradigm shift right now in the world. And those who have ears, they need to hear. I'm, um, I'm reading through Esther 4 right now. And I just want to read this passage of scripture from Esther 4, uh, verse 14. And this is Esther. This is uh, Mordecai talking to Esther. And he says, for if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Guys, we are living in such a time as this moment because I'm seeing even right now, God is really raising up leaders, especially like younger leaders for such a time as this. And if there was ever a time for us to not keep silent, it's right now because everybody's going through a shift. Everybody's changing. Everybody's going through some form of crisis. And God is raising up a generation of his children to be called for his divine purpose, getting back to purpose and passion, to just stand up and proclaim the truth. So I would just really, really highly uh, exhort to everyone to like, if you feel a tug on your heart for to, to feel God's divine purpose, do it, stand up, like seriously. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah, man, powerful, Ken, powerful. I'm so glad I invited you to this episode because everything you saying, bro, and for those that don't know, Ken is under 25, under 24. Like, Ken is about this, and there is greater that God's going to do through him, and that's just a testament of what happens when you go after it, just like he said. And there's a young generation that's coming up, man, that's going to be able to move things. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. My final thought for the listeners is this. I'm going to try my best to keep brief because I, I tend to get long-winded when I get passionate. 
passion is an emotion and that emotion can be used to help propel and fill your purpose or it can be used to do things in a destructive way you got to make sure you are protecting and focusing on the purpose don't get emotional don't get caught up don't get lost in the sauce right like be intentional about the right things um, something that I, I, I've always said, I've been saying this since I was like 21, 20, sorry, 20 years old. And I, 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 I'm believing it more and more now than even when I was younger in my 20s. Um, here's what I would say. If you ever have a question, you may not know what you were born to do. You may not know why you're still here or what's going on. But I promise you, if you want a confirmation that there's still purpose in your life, if you put your hand on your heart or if you put your hand on your wrist and you feel a heartbeat, there is still purpose yet to be done in your life. It doesn't matter if you're sick. It doesn't matter if you're going through something. It doesn't matter what diagnosis somebody gave. If you are still breathing and there's a heartbeat still on this side of the, 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 of the earth, there is something that God is calling you to do and for you to do. There are people that need us, that will cross our path, that will only be able to get exposed or to be able to get to the next destination through our life. We have to look at our life in a different lens. We can't just look at it as me getting me in mind. It's about how do I make sure I'm the best version of myself to help others? How do I make sure I'm about my father's business to really turn the world in the right direction? Because if you want to see change in the world, you got to be the change. So just like Ken said, we have to be willing to be the ones to stand up to help those that need the help. Because th th this world needs Jesus Christ. And the world won't change if we don't take the initiative to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth. We have to be intentional and we got to get our emotions out there the equation. Our emotions are not going to guide us to the truth. We got to focus on the truth. And that's what God gave us the Bible for, for us to be able to go into that and go out into the world in spirit and in truth. So that's where I would just end. If you ever need a confirmation that there is something yet to be done and there's a purpose, put your hand on your heart. And I promise when you put that heartbeat, that is the confirmation right there in itself. That there's something left to be done by you while you're still here. Um, when we think about passion, keep passion in check. Passion is an awesome thing, but passion needs to be an emotion that you're using as fuel to drive your purpose in the right direction and to pray and get that, um, you know, that alignment, that direction, that discernment of what you're supposed to be doing for the Lord Almighty. So um, with that, man, I, that, that's all I got. Ken, I am just so grateful, bro. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for the future for you. And I thank you for joining me on this episode. Man. Yeah, it was my pleasure, man. My pleasure. All right. Well, listeners, uh, that is a wrap for episode six. We have more on the way about this Type Passion with Purpose series. I'm really excited for it. We're going to kind of talk through. This is that foundation from this episode that we're going to hopefully build upon the rest of the season. But uh, continue to check us out. Um, like I've been saying for the last couple of episodes, please share this if this resonated not only with you, but if there's somebody that came to mind while you were listening, share that to that person. You never know who needs to hear things from another perspective, especially if we're thinking about like young men or somebody up and coming. This may resonate with them in a different way. Somebody may need to hear it from the examples that we gave. So please share this with others because this could be your opportunity to evangelize in a different way by just sharing uh, this podcast. So I encourage you to do that. Um, as we wrap, we've been asking this question again, and I'm going to end it with this. Uh, continue to ask yourself if you get the time, this question. How can I empower somebody else right here, right now? Until next time, everybody. Thanks for joining.